obstructive urolithiasis in sheep and goat. As we all know, obstructive urolithiasis is an economically relevant disease of the livestock because it is directly affecting the livelihood of the farmers. So what is urolithiasis? Urolithiasis is the formation of stones. Stones is the common layman's term. More scientifically, urolith. Urolith or stone is same. Urolithiasis is the formation of stone anywhere in the urinary tract. So what is obstructive urolithiasis? Obstructive urolithiasis is the retention of urine, subsequent lodgement of calculi anywhere in the urinary tract. And it is a very emergency condition as far as an animal is concerned. It causes heavy economic losses to the uh, livestock industry. And it is considered as the fifth most cause of death in a farm. So this uh, particular condition is a common problem, especially in male, goat, sheep, buffalo, and cattle as reported by the others. So what is the peculiarity? Why this sheep and goats are more susceptible? Or why ruminants are more susceptible? Why this cat or dog is not susceptible? So there are two aspects in this uh, question. So first is evolutionary aspect. In as uh, through evolution, God has created this particular sheep and goat in such a way that they have been given a certain anatomical peculiarity which predisposes them to obstructive urolithiasis. First is their urethra. Their urethra is long and as well as sigmoid in shape. And the extension, two to three centimeter extension of urethra can be seen from the tip of the glans penis. That is known as vermiform appendage or urethral process. That is an additional protecting protection for this particular species to protect their urethra during mating as well as it increases the consumption rate in this particular species. So it is used to spray the semen and as well as it is used to mark the territory. And as well as the management aspect is concerned, there are two aspects. One is, see, if we keep a bowl of water in front of a dog or cat, it will lick. But evolutionarily, this goat is, uh, goat is reluctant to take water by its own compared to the other species. This is noticed in this particular species. So reduced water intake by evolution, it is noticed in sheep and goat. And the grazing behavior, we know that sheep and goat are browsers. So especially in areas having endemic uh, uh, silicaceous or oxalate plants, if they graze excessively, they are prone for silic uh, silicate or oxalate stone. And in the management aspect, that is wholly depend on the farmer, how we manage. If they are fed more concentrate ratio, they are susceptible to mineral imbalances, which precipitate urolith, as well as for fattening purpose, for more lean, uh, fat or for to prevent buck order. They are castrating animals at a very early age. So such management aspects are more seen in this species. So this is why this particular species of uh, animals are more susceptible to urolithiasis. See, here we can uh, see the extension of your, this is the, see, the S-shaped sigmoid, uh, sigmoid flexure in uh, sheep and goat. And here you can see the extension of two, three, two to three centimeter extension of urethra is seen as urethra process in sheep and goat. So these two sites, the distal sigmoid flexure, as well as most common site is urethra, tip of urethra process are the most common site of obstruction. They have been designed or they have been created by God in such a way. So they are genetic, means evolutionarily they are predisposed to this particular condition. So as far as incidence is concerned, an incidence of 5.04% is noticed among the animals in India as far as obstructive urolithiasis is concerned. So most of the clinical cases are reported in male animals as far as ruminants are concerned. And in that also, marked increase is noticed, uh, means reported in extreme winter and extreme summer season. So here comes the importance of the uh, location. Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Bihar, Punjab, and most of the North Indian states, along with Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Kashmir, Tamil Nadu, have, have been reported as the, having highest incidences of urolithiasis in the country. So just to mention about the occurrence of uh, urolithiasis in IVR, because we are facing, uh, we are receiving high number of cases such that in extreme winter and summer, the incidence of the cases are 17 percentage. So since this 
cattle uh, caprine population is high the highest number of uh, obstructive urolithiasis we get is in caprine followed by buffalo cattle canine and feline ovine equine constitute only less than 1 percentage why because the sheep population is very less here and the main uh, reason for obstructive urolithiasis noticed is fattening purpose mainly they are grown for fattening purposes so they will be fed high concentrate ration especially here farmers are giving wheat bran which is high in phosphorus and there is a shortage of availability of green fodder also and for the purpose of preventing buck order and for uh, fattening they will do early castration in this particular part of the country so these are the main three reasons for uh, receiving obstructive urolithiasis high number cases in this part of country and we have got an extreme climate variation compared to south india in north india obstructive urolithiasis etiology is very complex and multifactorial and urinary calculate formation usually result from physiological nutritional as well as management aspect so physiological uh, pertaining to the anatomical aspects nutritional based uh, based on the diet that we feed and management that is weaning or castration aspect etc which i will be dealing further in the further slides so what are the predisposing factors for obstructive urolithiasis sex most of the cases are reported in male especially male uncastrated goats and age young male animals are reported young male caprines are more susceptible to urolithiasis why because they are uh, been at young age as well as fed high concentrate diet and as well as they are castrated type of feed i already mentioned in this particular part of country they are feeding more wheat bran anywhere anywhere in the country if we are giving more wheat bran or concentrate diet cereal grain it will be more susceptible hormonal imbalances less testosterone which is the hormone required for the normal development of anatomical if it is inhibited the uh, normal development won't occur normal growth won't occur urethral diameter will be narrow so in such cases also season extreme winter and extreme summer in north india especially we are facing extreme winter and extreme summer where well, there can be water scarcity or reduced intake of water and the fodder availability will also be less and genetic makeup some animals will be genetically due to autosomal recessive trait they will be genetically susceptible to urolithiasis management practices early castration that i already mentioned hypovitaminosis a and hypervitaminosis b which uh, vi this vitamin a is required for the normal uh, main, uh, integrity of the urinary epithelial cells so in hypovitaminosis a there can be denudation of epithelial cells of the bladder and which can shed into the bladder and act as a nidus and in case of affections of bladder and urethra any urinary tract infection can cause uh, the for uh, can cause precipitate the formation of calculate especially struvite calculate uh, moving on to the individual factors one by one in detail so nutritional high levels of phosphorus and magnesium are reported to cause urolithiasis whereas low high levels of uh, phosphorus magnesium and low levels of calcium and potassium diet having these things are susceptible to uh, urolithiasis because they will cause an imbalance in the calcium phosphorus Uh, ratio in the diet the normal calcium phosphorus ratio in case of ruminant sheep and goat should be between 1 is to 2 is to 1 to 2 is to 1 so when there is an imbalance excess phosphorus will be uh, secreted in the urine which uh, overcomes the ability of urine to regulate and it will start precipitating when it comes to especially when it comes to super saturation of urine and it can predispose to phosphatic calculate and any systemic illness in any systemic illness especially urinary tract infection or uh, which can which is mainly causing struvite calculate as well as unpalatable water when the water is not palatable the animal may uh, re 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 means they be reluctant to take water so there can be reduced water intake there can be, which can lead to dehydration and causes precipitation of uh, so, uh, the salt and rations high in cereal grain and oil means which are having high phosphorus content they are also susceptible to make the animal susceptible to obstructive urolithiasis and so in a nutshell diet and water intake are one of the major contributors to the uh, predisposition to obstructive urolithiasis in sheep and goat in our country so why if diet is a main issue i already mentioned this high grain diet and low roughage diet they are making the animal susceptible to phosphate urolith because high grain diet will be having uh, more phosphorus compared to uh, the uh, other diets 
and in case of ruminants the ruminants they normally remove the phosphorus by excreting it through saliva as well as feces but in case of a high grain and low roughage diet it decreases the formation of saliva so the normal ex uh, pathway of excretion of phosphorus it is inhibited so the extra phosphorus will be removed from the blood by the kidney so the kidney is overloaded so the uh, mechanism for excretion of phosphorus will be solely depend on the kidney as a result the renal excretion of phosphorus will increase and the phosphorus will start precipitating and it can lead to urolithiasis formation in case of ruminants why they, that is the main issue and as far as age is concerned young male goats and sheep maintained on concentrated rich diet especially young castrated male goat and sheep they are highly susceptible to uh, formation of urolithiasis because at a young age i had already told the hormonal influences as well as the lack of availability of fodder and most of the cases of urolithiasis that is 70% of the urolithiasis reported in caprine and ovine are in animals below 6 month of age that to all those animal most of them are castrated and it can be due to weaning at the month uh, weaning at 3 months of age after weaning they are given high concentrate diet thereby causing mineral imbalance and one more thing is that in young animal in young ruminant in young sheep and goat the urethral process will be attached to propuse and it will get separated only at the age of puberty until that it will be uh, attached to the urethral process will be attached to propuse and the urethral diameter will be narrow so in such cases it is more susceptible to urolithiasis and moving on to the sex so uh, most of the cases of uh, urolithiasis has been reported in male ruminants and the presence of sigmoid flexure and the adherence of urethral process to propuse in young animals predispose them to the obstruction of calculi in their reproductive tract so the narrow urethral tract in male is a very important factor so the site of obstruction of urolithiasis in male animals first site is urethral process then it is the distal aspect of sigmoid flexure and third is the urethra at the pelvic arch and the neck of the urinary bladder so i already mentioned that most of the cases are reported in male animal but since this place is very endemic we happen to see a case of urolithiasis in a female buffalo since this case is very rare i am just mentioning even though it is out of scope of this particular topic it is a rare finding in female in compared to males so males are mostly prone to uh, urolithiasis due to their anatomical peculiarity so what is the role of season what role the season plays so uh, winter season so most of the cases are reported in extreme winter that is from december to february or peak or extreme summer in extreme winter the animal will be will already will be uh, sheep and goat are already reluctant to take water in winter they will take less water only and the availability of fodder will be less green fodder so what the owner will do they will feed more concentrate diet to compensate for the lack of availability of roughage so that can be a predisposing factor in extreme summer there will be water scarcity and there will, which can lead to dehydration dehydration will causes renal concentration urine concentration and form uh, lead to the uh, precipitation of calculi so less water intake and deficiency of vitamin a is the major cause in winter as in summer it is the dehydration and the less water availability and the green fodder scarcity in both the season so uh, management practices castration at a very young age as people have the practice of castrating at a very young age for fattening purpose as well as for uh, removing the taint uh, uh, the buck taint so it can lead to deficiency of testosterone testosterone in a normal animal is required for the development of uh, normal anatomical tract so when there is uh, testosterone is inhibited the normal anatomical development will be inhibited so in such animal uh, the urethra will become narrow as well as the extrusion of urethra process from the prepuce it will be very difficult because for puberty testosterone is required so that is the castration aspect the type of feed i already mentioned if concentrate diet uh, wheat bran cereals or any oil grains is fed it is predisposed and availability of water which is the main issue and which can lead to chronic dehydration this i already mentioned and uh, moving on to the urinary calculi what is uh, urolith what are urolith urolith are solid crystalline formation composed of an organic matrix 
it is having an organic part as well as an inorganic part so organic part will be the sugar protein cells the neutered cells of bladder and the inorganic part can be any imba uh, imbalanced mineral that can be calcium magnesium and phosphorus so this organic matrix it can be from through the uh, that can be the shed epithelial cells due to vitamin a deficiency or it can be suture tissue debris blood clots excess protein or bacteria in the urine which can act as a needles so uh, and imbalances from the diet it can cause the precipitation of the other inorganic crystals that is calcium magnesium so both of these come out of the solution and bond in case of super saturation so the urine super saturation it is uh, seen in increased renal excretion negative energy, water balance dehydration and and urinary ph extreme alkaline ph are more uh, making the animal more susceptible to certain calculi like struvite so these are about urinary calculi and the mechanism of calculi formation major contributing factors are matrix matrix means i already mentioned now all the calculi will be having an organic and inorganic part organic part i already mentioned it can be the denuded cells inorganic part that is the uh, minerals and there are certain substances in the urine there are crystalline in crystallization inhibitor this naturally inhibit the formation of crystals by adhering to the surface of the crystals they adhere to the surface of the crystals and inhibit the formation of urolith they can be glycosaminoglycans osteopondin citrate etc uh, and uh, precipitation crystallization factors there are certain inorganic minerals in the urine which can support precipitate the crystallization so it is a contributing combined uh, union of all these factors which lead to the development of calculi the initial step in the calculi is the needle formation and later the super saturation of the urine occurs with lithogenic crystalloid the degree of super saturation is influenced by the magnitude of renal excretion of crystalloid urine ph and the presence of crystalline inhibitors in the urine so in case of animals in general there are four types of stone seed first one is a phosphatic group which include the struvite apatite that is calcium phosphate struvite is magnesium ammonium phosphate calcium carbonate silicate calcium oxalate this phosphatic that is calcium uh, phosphate and magnesium ammonium phosphate and calcium carbonate stone they are more leaf more found in the alkaline urine and mainly seen in animals which is fed high grain or legume diets but but this urine ph has no impact on the formation of silicate or calcium oxalate urolith so factors affecting the composition of calculi several factors are affecting the composition of calculi age sex infection composition of feed ph of urine etc so in adult animals the urolith formed as in especially in a adult goat goat it, the urolith formed will be hard and discrete because it is formed over a time period but but in young and growing ruminants the uh, calculi can be friable gravel like sandy masses in the bladder and urethra why so because it is formed over a short period of time and the authors have reported that majority of young goat and sheep they have phosphate calculi in their bladder and urethra so continuing uh, infection is an important factor especially infection with proteus urease producing bacteria like pneumococcus or proteus which make the animal susceptible to urolithiasis in sheep and goat urinary tract infection with ure urease producing bacteria like staphylococcus or proteus is reported to uh, to the formation of struvite calculi and high alkaline urinary ph of these animals are making them predisposed to urinary infection so precipitation of phosphate salt occur thereby leading to the obstruction of uh, their tract using uh, by uh, struvite calculi so in general in nutshell about the nature of feed and the type of calculi animals fed high grain diet is susceptible to struvite that is magnesium ammonium phosphate and apatite this is the most reported uh, calculi in the uh, literature and animals consuming legumes they are susceptible to calcium carbonate animals grazing silicaceous plants and soils they are susceptible to development of silicate calculi and animals consuming oxalate containing plant they are susceptible to development of calcium oxalate 
So uh, just I am mentioning about the appearance, microscopic appearance of different calculi. Through white calculi, they are having multiple shapes, especially they are prisms either in the rhomboid or rectangular shape. Urate calculi, they are amber colored rectangular calculi uh, visible as urate crystals, amber colored and rectangular shape. And this calcium carbonate, they are spherical with the radiating striations, which is easily appreciable in this picture. Oxalate calculi, they are having envelope shape or dumbbell shape, which you can appreciate in this picture. So, since most of the literature and honors uh, have, in these cases have been uh, struvite calculi, I will detail uh, tell about the struvite calculi. This struvite calculi, I already mentioned, it is prism-like. It is having six to eight-sided prism. It is rectangle with coffin-led appearance, and it can uh, take any shape, that is orthorhombic, prismatic, tabular, hemimorphic, etc. And this struvite calculi is the calculi mostly detected in ruminants, that is sheep and goat especially. It is due to excessive feeding of concentrate as compared to roughage. And, and diet rich in magnesium and phosphorus, low in calcium and potassium predispose them to this particular calculi. And occurrence of silica, oxalate and carbonate calculi, they are incidental findings in ruminants. They are very less and they can be very less and they are incidental findings. So most common calculi is struvite calculi. So moving on to the clinical signs. So the health status and body condition of the animal depends on the duration of illness and the patency of the urinary bladder. Clinical signs can vary depending on the condition of the bladder, whether the bladder is intact or ruptured, and the type of obstruction, whether it is partial or complete. Clinical signs will be very different in case of partial and complete obstruction. So, in partial obstruction, what are the clinical signs? So, the animal will be anorectic, dysuria, difficulty in urination, straining in urina, uh, urination, hematuria. Why hematuria? Because the obstructing calculi, it will damage the urethra or the bladder causing hematuria. And there can be prolonged urination time. So, in any disease condition, immediately the rumination will be suspended. And there can be sustained urination posture and there can be dribbling of urine because it is partial obstruction. And small amount of, in most of the cases presented in the clinic, we can appreciate small amount of urinary crystals in the hairs around the propuse. And in goat, especially, we can palpate a tensed bladder in the caudal abdomen compared to this buffalo. So I am here by depicting a video. See, in this, you can appreciate the abnormal gait and posture and the straining of the goat. This goat was presented with uh, obstructive urolithiasis. And you can, if you carefully observe, you can see the straining of the animal, the contraction of the abdominal muscle, how it is feeling difficulty. And the animal was found to be restless. In this video, you can see, you can see the prepucial hairs are painted with the calculi. In most of the obstructive urolithiasis cases of gods presented here, if we examine here, we can see uh, urolis obstructing the hairs around the prepuce. In cases of complete obstruction, complete obstruction, there will be frequent bleeding because, uh, because of the colic pain. And there will be anorexia, depression, suspended rumination and decreased water intake, straining, rectal prolapse. In extreme cases, in the delayed presented cases, we can see rectal prolapse due to the stra over straining of the animal. Weakness, bruxism, ventral pitting edema, distension of abdomen. So, what are the clinical signs in case of ruptured bladder? The animal will be dull and depressed. There can be distended abdomen because once the bladder is ruptured, the abdomen will be filled with urine. And the, this fluid can be detected on percussing the abdomen using our hand. And in case of severe azotemia, you can feel, we can feel the uremic breath from the uh, respiration of the animal. And there will be recumbency in severe cases. In uh, delayed cases, people used to present at around five days also, there can be subnormal body temperature. That is 96 degree Fahrenheit. It can be seen in case when there is retention of met, uh, metabolic waste product and their reabsorption results in toxemia. Due to toxemia, that subnormal temperature can be easily detected in the clinics. And in case of ruptured bladder, there are some very macroscopical clinical signs that we can appreciate directly without much uh, further investigation. The rupture of bladder in delayed cases, 
or due to administration of diuretics. Here there is practice, unskilled workers, unskilled pe people, they will administer uh, LASIX, that is frusamide. To obstructive urolithis case, it is actually contraindicated. In obstructive urolithis cases, we should not give LASIX. As a result, there is a lot of cases are reported with rupture of bladder. And this rupture of bladder, it will lead to uroperitoneum. And as well as urethra rupture can occur. In urethra, if the calculi is so much accumulating in the urethra, urethra rupture will also occur in the subsequent days. And it will also lead to leakage, uh, lead, uh, le urine leakage into the ventral abdomen and profuse. So in this picture, you can see the uh, ure urethra rupture, which is causing obvious fluid swelling later leading to severe cellulitis and toxemia in this animals. So in this uh, uh, pictures, we can clearly depict the urethra rupture. And in case of intact bl uh, bladder, the animal's heart rate, respiration, body temperature sometimes will be in the normal range and it can be slightly increased. So in such cases, the animal will be having abdominal pain. And then, uh, in, so in case of goat, they will be frequently bleeding and they will be restless and there will be frequent unsuccessful attempts to urinate. And as common in other signs, straining, bruxism and tail twitching can be seen. So the uh, signs of urethral obstruction, as the urethral obstruction is continued, there will be distension of urinary bladder. As a result, the bladder wall will start distending. As a result, there, it can lead to inflammation, pressure ischemia, thinning and herniation of uh, mucosal device, um, of bladder, and the, uh, it can lead to seepage of urine into the peritoneum. And as a result, the animal exhibits signs of pain reaction until perforation of urethra or rupture of bladder occurs. Once, once the bladder ruptures, the animal may not sh show any signs of discomfort. Why? Because the pressure or the pressure for uh, pressure filling bladder is now relieved. The animal is having comfort now. So I want to emphasize on the point that until and unless the bladder is fully distended, the animal may show some signs of discomfort. But once the bladder is ruptured, it may not show signs of discomfort. The urethral obstruction is extensively reported in male ruminant species and it can also lead to rupture of bladder and uh, complete obstruction of urethra uh, due to lodgement of calculi. This once the urethra is completely obstructed, it causes some uh, bad pressure to the bladder as well as the bladder as because of that, the bladder, uh, because of the back pressure, the bladder will start experiencing discomfort and it will start rupture. So in early signs, there will be severe pain. That is why the animal will be continuously bleeding, restless, leading to strangurea. And the standing calculi in young animal, which is initially lodged, get lodged in the urethra, can lead to complete urethral obstruction later, if not treated. And diagnosis. In an endemic area, like this part of the country, we can diagnose the condition through the clinic, uh, history and clinical ex, uh, examination itself because history from the owner itself will reveal whether he has castrated the animal at very young age and the clinical signs of distended abdomen or bleeding we can by through that we can ten, uh, diagnose the condition uh, so in like in all cases we require a complete physical examination radiography ultrasonography laboratory findings are ancillary techniques as far as ruminants are concerned so history and complete physical examination are very important as far as ruminant obstructive urolithiasis is concerned. So in history, we have to get details of feeding, castration, etc. And so we, as I have showed in that video, we can see uh, grits on the propitial hairs or pulsing of urethra uh, upon digital rectal examination. And in some cases, it means most of the cases, if the urethra is ruptured, I have shown in the previous picture, large plaque of fluid will be seen surrounding the prepuce. If there is cellulitis or toxemia, the color will be changed. And in case of ruptured urinary bladder, the animal will be having pear-shaped abdomen with bilateral ventral distension. So ultrasonography. Ultrasonography is an ancillary technique as well as it is non-invasive, reproducible, and inexpensive method. So uh, in the diagnosis of ultra, I mean, in the diagnosis of obstructive urolithiasis, it helps in localization of urethral calculi and rupture of urethra or the urinary bladder. See, in cases, it can detect small and radiolucent calculi stones of about 1 to 2 mm diameter 
that cannot be seen in a regular survey radiograph so radiography survey radiography it is very useful in cases of calcium carbonate urolith or silicate urolith which are very radio opaque even though phosphatic stones are uh, radio opaque sometimes they can be less, uh, less radio opaque compared to the calcium carbonate or silica but absence of urolith in an x ray it will not rule out the possibility of urolithiasis so there comes the importance of history clinical science and ultrasonography hematological and biochemical examination in hematological there will be hemoconcentration in a fresh case the animal may not show much signs except uh, leukocytosis but in especially in delayed cases there can be hemoconcentration due to dehydration as a result of fluid leakage across the peritoneum and leading to increase in pcv leukocyte count erythrocyte count and there can be azotemia that is one and creatine level will be increased high potassium phosphorus and magnesium level which indicates a poor prognosis and uh, this ruminants ruminants are able to manage blood urea nitrogen and potassium through ex, uh, rumen i mean through manure as well as saliva so in ruminants creatine is a more reliable indicator of impaired renal perfusion compared to bun moving on to the treatment aspect as well as the most important one of the apart from the management the other important part of obstructive urolithiasis the treatment can be medical or surgical irrespective of etiology the obstructive urolithiasis is an emergency condition the medical management is optional when it is optional depending on the condition of the animal clinical sign severity site of occurrence number of calculi and the economic status of the owner there comes uh, the point some owners even though the animal will be serious or it is partially partially obstructed animal will uh, the owner will be reluctant because he will be poor so such factors are to be taken into consideration before moving to surgical aspect obstructive urolithiasis with an intact bladder it is a critical condition which require immediate surgical intervention so moving on to the medical management in mild case or so freshly presented cases we can go for antispasmodic like cyclopam Uh, or any litholytic drugs like cystone tablet to, in order to treat the metabolic derangement hyperkalemia hyponatremia hypochloremia first we have to stabilize the animal using fluid therapy then a very broad spectrum antibiotic it is a very painful condition for the animal especially in case of urethral obstruction so analgesic has to be given multivitamin to support healing and ammonium chloride since since most of the literature has reported through it as the calculi i have mentioned Yeah, the urinary acidifier ammonium chloride has to be given at dose rate of 250 to 450 mg per kg body weight as medical management we used to give here but but the treatment of obstructive urolithiasis is primarily surgical however we manage using medical management later the owner will present the animal for surgery so moving on to the surgical management of obstructive urolithiasis so before moving to surgery we have to assess the clinical condition of the animal first we have to stabilize the animal if it is a freshly presented case we can directly give anesthesia and start surgery but what is in a case of delayed case most of the owners are present the animal after treatment with the uh, unskilled persons they will present as delayed case so in that case first we have to go for correction of post renal azotemia acid base imbalances dehydration and after correction of primary causes Uh, by medicinal management fluid therapy dietary modification we can go for surgical management of urolithiasis in case of sheep and goat the first option we go for is urethral process amputation next next is the uh, most commonly used method that is tube cystostomy third is bladder marsupialization urethrotomy urethrostomy so urethral process amputation i already told uh, the god has given this species some anatomical peculiarity which predispose this poor creature to obstructive urolithiasis so in case of urethral process amputation we just need to uh, restrain the animal in lateral recumbency and we need to cut but but i told most of the animals are in this especially in this particular area are presented at age of less than 6 month in such animals the urethral process exteriorization is very difficult we cannot uh, exteriorize We, for that we have to cut the foreskin and with very much difficulty we have to exteriorize and most of the cases the urethral process 
present uh, if we exterior if we see it will be necros because they are presented very delayed and because of the obstruction due to so much calculi most of the urethra process will be necros which you can appreciate in the second picture seen the uh, screen if here you can see the necros urethra process a goat was presented for tube cystostomy after two days see you can see the necros the urethra process because of the calculi in the third picture in my hand you can see the calculi the uh, number of calculi which has obstructed the urethra process and has got uh, caused its necrosis so urethra process amputation we uh, do very less because there was no need to do that because already the urethra process will be damaged before presentation next next we move on to the tube cystostomy i would like to emphasize on this particular method i will explain in detail because it is very relevant in this particular area and when i inquired all over india practitioners field veterinarians and surgeons are mostly preferring this particular method so what is tube cystostomy tube cystostomy is the urinary diversion technique or urethral bypass technique wherein wherein a foley's catheter is placed into the urinary bladder lumen through a laparotomy incision what are all the indications of a tube cystostomy urethral obstruction urethral rupture or ruptured urinary bladder in case of small ruminants it is mainly indicated for small ruminants that is sheep and goat so as i am in this part of country and in this particular research i would like to emphasize on tube cystostomy because a time was there is yes, i already mentioned uttar pradesh having highest population and in this particular uh, place we have we are susceptible uh, the goats are susceptible to urolithiasis to the extent that in extreme summer and extreme winter we are getting an incidence of about 17 percentage a time was there when the urolithiasis early in the 1990 uh, 2000 that time urolithiasis was treated with uh, urethrotomy but but by the late 1990s uh, dr amarpal sir and coworkers have invite invented it means discovered not invented discovered a novel method of tube cystostomy uh, along with urinary acidification of the calculi through your uh, bladder or through uh, oral route this particular uh, method has revolutionized the treatment of tube cystos uh, obstructive urolithiasis such that a uh, survival rate which was less than 50 percentage in which it increased to more than 95 percentage after doing this particular technique the impact of this particular technique was that field veterinarians more uh, practitioners surgeons has started adopting this technique and started getting very good results this uh, result will depend on the post operative care as well as the surgery how efficiently the surgery will depend that is another aspect but this particular method was devised here and it was found to be it is now also it is found to be very effective so before doing tube cystostomy first we have to give in any surgery anesthesia is very important so here what we are doing is that we are giving epidural analgesia in case of sheep and goat we go for lumbosacral epidural analgesia so we know that we have to palpate the lumbosacral space by palpating the iliac crust we have to palp uh, touch the first depression in the third picture you can see the lumbo uh, lumbosacral space wherein we have to insert the needle after uh, properly assessing the depth in young animal the intervertebral space will be very less so it will be a bit difficult but in uh, animals in uh, other animal adult animal it is very easy to get so for giving lumbosacral epidural anesthesia the animal should be properly restrained so this is the question we used here and it is very easy, easy and it is very easy to manipulate so we have to palpate the lumbosacral space this depression and we have to inject the anesthesia and we have to monitor the effect so i gave the anesthesia and after some time it will take 5 to 10 minutes for epidural anesthesia see we, you can see the animal becoming recumbent so after epidural anesthesia the uh, sensation of the hind limb will be lost so as a result uh we can do surgeries up to umbilicus so after giving epidural anesthesia we give 2% lignocaine at a dose rate of 1 ml per 7 kg so moving to the site of incision so uh in this picture you can see 
I have mentioned an arrow. It is to depict that clearly the uh, bladder, distended bladder in this picture, you can clearly see the distended bladder of the goat. The site of tube cystostomy is, I am explaining in the picture, it is 5 centimeter from the midline as well as 2 to 3 centimeter cranial to the caudal teeth. And in case, if we are not able to give uh, lumbosacral epidural anesthesia, we can also go for local infiltration. And since the surgery, it will take only very few minutes, we can do it under local infiltration also at the dose rate of 1 ml per centimeter. It is optional. If we have given epidural, we can do through that. But once if we don't get, especially in young animals, we can go for this particular uh, method of an anesthesia also. So we require very minimum instruments uh, for uh, performing tube cystostomy. Most important is the stylet and Foley's catheter, needle holder, artery, scissors, BP blade, and surgical gloves. So in case of goat, we are using uh, tube cystos uh, Foley's catheter of 14 gauge. So I am just depicting the injection <laughs> after aseptically preparing the site. Uh, we have to mark the site that is 5 centimeter from the midline and 2 to 3 centimeter from the co uh, caudal teeth. We are putting an incision. After putting the incision, we have to dissect the subcutaneous tissue and muscles. Sub if immediately after dissecting the subcutaneous tissue, uh, we can see the fascia, abdominal fascia. This is the abdominal fascia. It is better to dissect using uh, scissors. So uh, one more point I have to emphasize here is that I already told that the site is 2 to 3 centimeter cranial to the caudal teeth, but, but the incision site may vary depending on the position of the bladder. In case, in case of a ruptured bladder, the bladder will be more towards the pelvic inlet. So in that time, our incision should be more caudal, caudal than the normal position. So uh, assessing the position of the bladder, we have to put incision. And so these are the structures, uh, the abdominal fascia. We have to put a neck incision. We can see the rectus abdominis muscle. By incising the muscle, we, you can see the peritoneum. In God, it is very uh, thin, all the muscles as well as the peritoneum. So before opening the abdomen, before opening the peritoneum, we have to uh, make a tunnel for the Foley's catheter. Because uh, we are uh, to tube cystostomy is all about bypassing the urethra. So you are, we are directly connecting the Foley's catheter to the bladder. It is bypassing the urethra. So through this tube, urine will come out. So we have to fix the tube using a subcutaneous tunnel. This is the procedure. The tube should be passed subcutaneously only using an artery forceps. And for directing, for puncturing the bladder, we require a stylet to hold the catheter. So this is that procedure. So before moving on to the puncturing of bladder, I would like to explain the parts of Foley's catheter. This tip, this is the tip that is going to the uh, bladder that we are putting into the bladder. So this tip is one uh, point towards the bladder opening. Here we see a balloon. It is a tear resistant balloon. And the other, uh, it is having two sides. The proximal part, it is going to the bladder and the distal part where we have got two ports. The green port is the port for balloon inflation. Through this, we will pump, uh, infuse water to inflate the balloon. According to the size of the bladder only, we have to inflate the balloon. That is the important factor. Here, in case of 14 gauge, 14 gauge is the green color that we use for buff, uh, God in this it will be written as 30 ml. But after assessing the size of the bladder of the goat, we have to infuse water. So in case of buffalo, we are using 16 gauge. And in case of small animals, we go for 8 or 10. Step while doing uh, tube cystostomy. One thing is that the goat will start crying. All the intestine, peritoneum, and, uh, the omentum will come out. So it should be very carefully, very patiently, this procedure has to be done. See, you can see that the stylet is connected to the uh, catheter and we are going to, I mean, the uh, surgeon has punctured the bladder. So the urine is coming out through the urine port. It is clinical sign. And this is the uh, video showing we have to see. Once the 
uh, catheter is inside the bladder, we can see urine will start coming. So, but we have to fix the catheter. So, to fix the catheter, initially we have to palpate the bladder. We have to assess the size of the bladder. After that, accordingly, we will fill water. So, assess the bladder and inflate the balloon. For God, even though it is written 30 ml in the catheter, we have to inflate using only 5 to 10 ml water. How will we confirm that the catheter is in the bladder? See, there are so many steps. There can be colon, there can be rumen. So how will we confirm that the catheter has passed into the bladder only? If urination has not come out, means urine has not come out. So first thing is, if it is in the bladder, urine will come out. But what in case if the there is an, a, a, a very big defect, then all the urine will uh, infuse into the peritoneum, means abdomen. Now. So in that case, also urine can come. So the most confirmatory method for... Uh, confirming the uh, patency of catheter in the bladder is tracing the catheter itself. In this picture, you can see the I have exteriorized the bladder with the catheter in the bladder. So it is confirmed that uh, catheter is in the bladder. And see, if we are peritoneal, if ex experienced person with a single puncture itself, we can pass. But in some cases, the render on the bladder can be very big. So in ca such cases, we have to go for a purse string suture around the bladder. Otherwise, otherwise, the urine will leak out through the big rent and again it will cause uroperitoneum. Subsequently, then uh, it can cause cellulitis and toxemia. So these are some important aspects which we should do during surgery. So once uh, after puncture, you can see the calculi. See, I am uh, holding, I mean, feeling some calculi in the bladder which came out through the urine which was obstructing. So we can easily palpate. In all cases of God, we can see this calculi presented here. So, how to fix the catheter? See, the goat, even though it is not uh, not so not so active like dog or cat, it, it is somewhat active. So, uh, we should uh, fix the catheter. We should save the catheter by putting, uh, by fixing it to the abdominal wall. Using a uh, non-absorbable suture material. But, but we should uh, Consider one point, that is, the suture should not be too tight. What if it is too tight? If it is too tight, the catheter will be very tight and it will obstruct the flow of urine. It is one of the post-operative complication of this particular method. Surgery is one aspect. But, but as far as tube cystostomy is concerned, most important aspect of tube cystostomy is post-operative care. That too, done by the owner. So, after surgery, the owner should be clearly made aware of the post-operative care. So post-operative medications, the antibiotic has to be given for 7 to 10 days, analgesic has to be given for 7 days, and all ruminants we have to give tetanus, especially sheep and goat, as they are more prone. And the urethral patency is ex uh, assisted by examining the signs of urination. So owner should continuously monitor the whether animal is urinating through the normal orifice. And after day five, from day five, we are uh, advising the owner to clamp the foley's catheter to encourage the urination through the propuse and whether the animal is showing any signs of urination through the natural orifice, just only for clamping for 30 minutes. And the foley's catheter, if the animal start urinating through the, see, if, he, uh, if the obstruction is relieved and the animal start uh, passing uh, urination through the natural orifice, we will wait for three to four days. To remove the foley's catheter and the uh, tract left by the cat uh, catheter has to be dressed until healing and this are all the farmer's aspect he has to do he has to feed adequate water mixed with salt and jaggery salt to enhance more water intake and jaggery to enhance water intake only and here we are getting only stroid calculi so as an acidifier, ammonium chloride ha has been given, is being given at dose rate of 250 to, 4, uh, to 450 mg per kg body weight to maintain urine pH within a range of 6 to 6.5. And in this particular part of country, animals the mostly susceptible to urethias mainly due to feed. It is feed brand. Howsoever we tell the owner, don't feed. They will feed only wheat brand. So uh, we should advise them to stop feeding wheat bread and castration should be delayed until sexual maturity. See, normal castration age is two to three months of age. But in endemic area, endemic area, we can delay castration. 
uh, after six months because most of the cases are presented at uh, below six months of age. But we can delay castration in endemic area to minimize this menace, to tackle this menace. And we should also in, uh, advise the owner to uh, to see the animal properly save the catheter so that so that the animal will not manipulate the catheter and when to remove the catheter the catheter should be in the bladder the for the other uh, formation of other shells between bladder and abdominal wall it will take 14 days so once the animal starts urinating through the natural orifice then only we have to remove the catheter normally here it takes 15 to 20 days. And these are the ammonium chloride bolus which we get here. It is 2.5 gram bolus we are getting and it is very cheap. So post-operative care, what we have to advise the owner, that is the catheter, it should be regularly flushed. This is the urine drainage port. So we have to advise the owner to flush the catheter 7 to 8 times regularly with the lukewarm water. As I am doing here, this is the balloon inflation port. It should not be touched. Uh, you, we have to flush through the urine drainage port. And the uh, this other management aspect of tube system is we have to uh, flush the iodine, codon iodine solution through the hole through which catheter is coming. Otherwise, it is one of the post-operative complications whereby infection occurs in this particular tract. So this honor should be clear cut, made under, uh, understood because no, apart from <laughs> surgery, post-operative post complications are more. If prop uh, properly cared, the outcome is very rewarding in this particular area. And so uh, uh, next post-operative care after this particular surgery is that we have to advise the owner to clamp. I already told clamp or tie rope in the or thread in the catheter so uh, so as to uh, see whether uh, urine it is urinating through the natural orifice. If we cannot tie uh, any thread, we can also block the urine drainage port through uh, using a syringe hub. This is also a very effective method used, used in this particular place. You can either tie or use a syringe hub. So uh, we should block the catheter only for 30 minutes a day, starting from the day five of surgery. Most important thing is complication. What are the complications of tube cystostomy? Wound infection or descents, as in case of other surgeries, catheter tract infection. If the catheter is not properly cleaned, it can lead to catheter tract infection. Obstruction of catheter. Uh, if there is so much calculi, if the calculi are dissolving and it, there is stands of obstruction of catheter if it is not properly flushed. Urine can leakage to subcutaneous tissue in case of urethral obstruction. If we bypass the blood uh, uh, urethra also, in some cases, there can be urine leakage due to into the subcutaneous tissue. It can occur and misplacement of catheter to other internal organs. There has been incidences where catheter can be pierced into rumen or colon also. So we should be very careful while doing the surgery. And displacement of cystostomy too from the urinary bladder. If the bladder is not, I mean, not the bladder, if the catheter is not inflated, if we forget, the catheter will naturally come out. And reobstruction. If the owner will not stop feeding uh, wheat bread, there will be reobstruction because of reoccurrence of calculi and persistent urethral obstruction. Next method for treating obstructive urolithiasis is bladder marsupialization. It is very less, uh, uh, very rarely used technique just to um, throw some light or just to mention it is creating permanent opening from the urinary bladder to the skin. It, prov it will provide urine outflow that bypasses the urethra. So through a paramedian incision, we are fixing the bladder to the body wall. So in the such cases, there is more chance of infection because the bladder is open to the environment and there can be urine scald, mucosal prolapse of the bladder and infection. Next is urethrotomy. From the very old period, we, we were using, here it was using urethrotomy. So in cases of urethropros amputation or tube cystostomy fail, we go for urethrotomy, but we are opening the urethra uh, through a postcortal incision. Uh, we are removing the calculi from the uh, urethra. It is seen in the picture. We are removing, we are op, uh, putting incision on the urethra. We are removing the calculi and we are passing the catheter and ensuring the patency, fixing the catheter, and we are suturing the urethra. But it has got very uh, so many postoperative complications. There can be postoperative leakage of urine, necrosis of urethra, sub, uh, and subcutaneous tissue, postoperative urethral constriction, and 
again it can lead to recurrent urethiasis we can compare the size of urethra of buck so in such small animal it is very complicated perineal urethrostomy it is it is a salvage technique it is the ultimate permanent method wherein what is happening is that urination is established by an opening created on the proximal urethra we are creating a permanent uh, opening in the urethra in the perineal region and fixing it to the skin in that region it is indicated wherein Ure uh, the urethral prostatation or the tube cystostomy uh, 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 and bladder marsupial bladder marsupialization or the urethrotomy all these procedures fails and in cases where there is urethral rupture urethral stricture or urethral obstruction it is the ultimate technique and it is salvage technique and it has also got complication wherein there will be hemorrhage surgical site infection reobstruction stricture of urethral stoma that prior limb because it is in the perineal region urine scald cystitis so these are all about the surgical aspect now now moving on to the prognosis of obstructive urolithiasis animals with intact bladder are superior in superior condition than those animals with a ruptured urethra and both are better than animal with uroperitoneum time is an important factor in the prognosis of obstructive urolithiasis as there is delay in presentation of the case to the uh, clinic the animal's condition start deteriorating the bladder may start rupture or the urethra may rupture so time is very important factor and there can be recurrence of calculi this is very important there can be recurrence of calculi either due to failure of treatment or lack of post operative care it's most commonly seen and as well as the if management is not properly done after surgery and a grave prognosis is uh, given where for especially males intended for breeding if there is urethral rupture there is no point in uh, keeping such animals for breeding as urethra is the common pack for semen as well as urine now the most important aspect of ural obstructive urolithiasis prevention prevention of urolithiasis it is not a specific disease the urolithiasis is not a specific disease but it is a potential complication of many different disorder i already told it is having complex and multifactorial etiology so while considering prevention we have to consider the composition of the urolith these are all the minerals that is involved the environmental as well as the dietary factors so critical preventive measures involve providing calcium to phosphorus ratio around 2 is to 1 increasing salt level to 4 percentage so we have to stop the uh, wheat bran and we have to uh, customize the diet in such a way that the calcium phosphorus ratio is between 2 is to 1 not is between it is 2 is to 1 and increasing or promoting salt level to 4 percentage so that the water intake is increased and most commonly reported calculi is true white calculi it can be prevented by dietary modification to induce urinary acidification because true white will crystallize in alkaline environment ration modification it is solely dependent on the owner farmer where in a uh, reduction or the uh, wheat bran or grain oil grain should be completely eliminated and the owner has to shift to grass hay as a primary forage and we have to uh, advise the owner especially owners in endemic area to delay castration until puberty because testosterone i already mentioned testosterone is important for the normal development of male reproductive tract so uh, testosterone is very important to achieve puberty as well as normal reproductive tract growth provision of clean drinking water in multiple sites especially in extreme winter extreme summer we have to promote water intake so we have to keep water at multiple sites and intentionally we have to salt the moistened grass hay and induce the diuresis and free access to grazing especially where area where there is fresh fodders are available we have to uh, give free access to grazing because uh, it will increase the daily amount of water intake as well but in endemic area where there is oxalate or silicon uh, silica plants we have to restrict and in endemic area of stoic calculi especially this particular area we can as a preventive measure we can advise the owner to give urinary acidifiers like ammonium chloride for particular period to conclude my presentation obstructive urolithiasis is an emergency condition in ruminants that require immediate intervention especially surgical intervention stage of clinical presentation and condition of animal is important in deciding the prognosis 
this particular condition is having multifactorial etiology. So treatment should be directed to resolve all these factors, especially, especially this management factors. And recurrence of calculi can be due to failure of treatment, failure of surgery, or mostly due to lack of post-operative care. Early presentation of the case to clinic. It will minimize the chance of rupture of the bladder and as well as subsequent fatal complication that can occur due to rupture of bladder.